All right, so folks, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Laren Thomas himself right here. Laren, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, kind of, uh, you know, out of the blue, we, we got a message from you and you were like, hey, I'm, I'm in town, um, going to come by the store. And we were like, yes, absolutely. So um, so you are the father of Magna Cut, mm -hmm. but we want to take uh, some time and take a trip back. How did you get into knives? How did you get into blade steel? And you were just telling me something really interesting, uh, kind of about that origin story about your dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my dad is Devin Thomas. He's known for making Damascus, especially stainless Damascus. And, uh, you know, he really was selling this in like the late 80s, early 90s, and some of the early days of selling Damascus, period. And stainless Damascus was a new mythical thing. You know, in the past, it was mostly forging guys making their own Damascus, uh, and the folder guys were not that interested. Uh, but once they had it in thin stock and stainless, then my dad's business really blew up and became uh, a big name in the industry. And so I was not interested in his business uh, as a child. You know, it's just what my dad did. Uh, <laughs> right. But then in my teen years, he took me to a couple hammer ends and a couple knife shows. And what interested me really was the advertising. So you'd see the custom knife guys. And I remember one guy, he had a fillet knife and he would bend it 90 degrees back and forth. And he said, this is because I use a special steel. I can't tell you what it is. And uh, then I heat treat it in this special way, which I won't tell you what that is. So, you know, it's like all of these secrets. And I'm like, wow, what is this going on? And then even when they do advertise things, there was like ATS 34, 154 CM were big at that time. And so I'd ask my dad all these steel comparison questions and, you know, we would talk. And of course, he knows some steel metallurgy from having to make Damascus. And uh, then my, my nerdy engineer brain, you know, really got interested in all those aspects. And uh, so I started reading everything I could. So John Verhoeven, he's a professor of metallurgy at Iowa State. He's famous for Woots. And he came out with a self-published book that was free at the time. And I read through that thing uh, in high school, and I loved it. And so eventually, I went on to get a degree in metallurgy. I have a PhD, so very fancy So <laughs> compared to what my parents were doing. Uh, and, and so you know, I was working developing automotive sheet steel. Uh, for U.S. Steel research, and I really liked it. It's not like you know I didn't enjoy my job, but you know in the in the breaks in between automotive steel, I'm like, wow, can I get back into knife steel more as a hobby? So I started up Knife Steel Nerds, uh, which is a website. And I published a book, Knife Engineering, and I just started doing a ton of experiments on knife steel. You know, all the questions that I always had that people always ask on how do you optimize heat treatments? What are the best steels for this or that? And eventually I thought, okay, is it realistic for me to make my own knife steel? This is really what got me into steel metallurgy to begin with, like making my own steels was really exciting. S30V came out in my late teens, uh, early teens, somewhere in there. Yep. Uh, and I was so excited and I would talk to the Crucible guys from the steel company Crucible that makes it and just pester them with questions like, how did you choose this much chromium? Like, how, how did you know how much vanadium to put in there? Why did you add more molly in this one? You know, and I, I just was geeking out and, and they, they would talk to me. They're always very nice, you know, even though they're fancy metallurgists and I was just a teenager, son of a <laughs> Damascus maker, you know. Uh, so they're always very kind. Uh, of course, everyone in the knife industry is kind, not just the metallurgists. So, you know, the community is an important aspect of everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, that was my excitement from the beginning. And I started playing around with different things. So I had modeled out all of this stuff. Like I would heat treat a ton of different steels and then use that to predict hardness based on composition and the temperature you heat treat from. And so I had all these different simple models for predicting knife steel behavior based on composition and some computer software that also does some predictions. And so I fed all those different models together and I found a space in you know the property map that was empty and i'm like wow this space looks really good you know so we had non-stainless and stainless steels right this is the old age competition you know the right. battle like which one is better and uh, non-stainless was better in terms of toughness edge retention combination the non-stainless powder metallurgy steels were up here in the property map and the stainless steels were down here they just couldn't have the same property combination uh, but magna cut it has a uh, microstructure similar to the non-stainless steels with the stain resistance of the best stainless steels available. And I was like, wow, this, is, this could be a game changer. And so I go to Crucible Steel and Niagara. So Crucible, they 
uh, atomize the powder and make the ingots. And then Niagara, they roll it out and anneal it and sell it to the distributor. So I talked to both those companies and I pitched to them. And of course, the crucible metallurgist guy working at the mill, he's like, I don't know about this guy. You know, I'm like 30, in my early 30s, you know, and I work at a steel research center, not on tool steel. And so, you know, he's quizzing me on if I know anything about what I'm talking about, because, you know, mill metallurgists, they don't trust research metallurgists. We're, <laughs> we're, we're just ivory tower guys that make unrealistic things, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I had to alleviate his fears and be like, you know, I think it can work for these reasons. And uh, they had enough confidence in me to give it a try. And uh, we had to make 5,000 pounds of it, which is a lot for like if you're developing something in a lab, but not very much for normal steel production, which can be 20,000, 40,000 pounds. But it's still expensive to make 5,000 pounds. Right. And if it had gone way wrong, I'm sure they would have said, you know, we gave it a try, you know, better luck with another company kind of thing. But we, we hit it on the first try, that first ingot of steel. It worked great. It had all the properties I said it was going to have. So you know that, that gave me a lot of uh, street cred uh, right from the start. And uh, it really did fit in that property range that I expected it to. And so, you know, I, I listed that on my website, like here's the new steel, here's the properties we measured, you know, real measurements, not just we think it's good. Right. You know, we test the toughness with a real impact toughness tester. I have an edge retention tester in my garage, which we can discuss how I got that maybe another time. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it, the properties turned out great. And so I promoted that. And it's also in a space that's good for production knives, I think. It's tougher to use for custom knife makers because they do hand rubbed finishes. Right. And when you have vanadium or niobium added to it, that makes really hard carbides that are harder than the abrasive in the sandpaper. But for production knives, it's great. And some brave custom knife makers do use it, luckily. And so uh, they are starting to use it, some switching over even, which is really exciting. So uh, every Blade Show now, I get given a couple knives, you know, again, the great people in our community, and I buy a bunch. And uh, my wife keeps asking me where all these knives are going to go. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, we got room in the house, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you, you mentioned this off camera, and this was really cool. So what was the timeline? What, what, what time are we talking about where you were... Uh, in talks with Crucible and with Niagara here? Oh, that would have been like 2019-ish, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Oh, okay. And then Magna Cut came out in 2021, mm -hmm. so pretty recently. Yep. You know, so people are asking, where is the Magna Cut? I'm like, well, I mean, they have orders of steel in, they have steel, you know, like it takes time to switch over. If anything, some of the companies were like, why did you guys rush this out so quickly? Like, give us a slow lead time, you know, like release it <laughs> right. behind the scenes first. And uh, because there's been a lot of demand for the steel. Oh, absolutely. So. And so when Isaac and I, and you were mentioning this, you know, we got to make a trip up to Crucible and Niagara. Yeah, I was um, jealous. Back in uh, in 2021. And actually, when we made that trip, they were doing some some testing on stuff. And they were like, yeah, we can't really show you <laughs> the information on this. And this is something we're, uh, yeah, we can't really put a, a name on that. Uh -huh. So um, we can't show you anything about it. And I was like, man, I wonder what that is. <laughs> and then it was just like a couple of months later after we made that trip that you made the announcement mm -hmm. um, that it was actually going to be coming out. And I was like, man, I, I've been wondering ever since, are that, is that what they were working on? When we were there talking it could to them, be, it and could uh, be. I'm guessing the guy you were talking about was probably Bob. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, he, he he's a nice guy, you know. Oh, he's he, wonderful. He, he's not scary, but you know, he's got to do some but, probing and make oh, sure absolutely. that we know what we're doing. So. I mean, we're talking about Bob Skibitsky here, who mm -hmm. has been at this game for a really long time, and he, mm -hmm. he knows his stuff. He knows what he's doing. Actually, we did um, our first Blade Steel video, and one of the guys that worked there uh, at the time, he doesn't work there anymore, but Chris, mm -hmm. um, actually commented on it and was like, have you been talking to one of our guys, like Bob or something? <laughs> because uh, you guys know a, a way more than you're, you should about how this process <laughs> is done. And I was like, well, I've got a little bit of experience. Not a lot, but mm -hmm. I, I worked in metal fabrication. So uh, I've got a little bit of experience in uh, you know knowing the properties of steels. Um, never got that deep into it, but... Um, that's why I've always thought it was so fascinating, and especially after I came across your website, I just geeked out immediately. And you were talking about custom knife makers using um, your steel. McNeese is one. Now, he's 
kind of changed gears to doing more production runs um, on knives, but he still makes them in his small shop in Alabama. And he's one of those that has switched over to using predominantly MagnaCut on a lot of his knives. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, he's just, I mean, one of my favorite knife makers out there. He's a really cool dude anyways, really nice guy. Um, and I love the stuff that he's putting up, putting out. Of course, we did our case Marilla in MagnaCut. Um, that was our exclusive right there. And then uh, when actually MagnaCut was first made available, this is one of the first ones that I got to do some testing with and to do some yeah, the uh, mule. bushcrafting with right there. And we got, uh, I think, three or four of them that we did some extensive testing. We left one of them in a tub of salt water for like a week and a half or something like that um, until the water was gone and it was nothing but crystallized salt all over the place. And I was amazed at the fact that it had a lower level of chromium, but then listening to your description, how um, the chromium, that much chromium wasn't necessary because it's not tied up in carbides was just brilliant. I mean, I, I love that. So well, I can't take full credit for it because the really high corrosion resistance of MagnaCut was an accident. <laughs> so I'd rather be lucky than good. Right. So what MagnaCut was designed to have was equivalent corrosion resistance to S30V and S35VN. Right. You know, popular steels. Like, okay, we'll just match that corrosion resistance, but the toughness will be better. Right. And uh, so that'll be, you know, the exciting thing. Then I tested the corrosion resistance and it was way better. And I'm yeah. like, oh, like what what happened? And then <laughs> then I realized uh, this this effect, you know, of eliminating the chromium carbides. Because when you form a carbide, it steals the chromium from that region. So, you know, there's a, a carbide that forms and it's got to get the chromium from somewhere. And you get these localized regions with reduced chromium. And so the corrosion starts there. And so when you make the microstructure without those carbides, then even though you have the same chromium in solution to form the chrome oxide layer, yeah. the corrosion resistance is better. Boom. Now, also going back to your origin, and you talked about your dad and his experience making Damascus, he was recently inducted yeah, the Blade Cutlery Hall of Fame, which is a huge honor. So I believe the number was 71 people are in it now, which includes the dead ones. Right. Uh, as the probably the most prestigious, you know, group to be in. Yeah. You know, there's no other competing Hall of Fame, you know, none that has any notoriety. Right. Uh, so we were so excited for him because, you know, he's been at this for a long time. You know, it's his whole life, his whole passion. And uh, so it was just very emotional to go to that ceremony and he's able to, you know, be recognized by his peers. And so it was just awesome, you know, and to, to me, I feel happy for him, obviously. I feel proud of him like I had something to do with it, you know, even though he, <laughs> he has his own career and his own path. Uh, but that, that's one nice thing is that I have been able to do my own thing within the same right. business. And I'm, I'm sure, like, and you're humble, but I'm sure he's proud of you. And, and Oh, Martin, yeah, yeah. You've indelibly left on the cutlery community. I mean, it's, it's undeniable. Um, so... You talked about the first book that you wrote. Mm -hmm. You've Knife got another engineering. one mm -hmm. um, that is going to be coming out soon. Is that right? Uh, the story of Knife Steel came out about a month ago. Okay. So I tried to get it out just in time for Blade Show. And so Knife Engineering is a book mostly for knife makers, some for knife enthusiasts who want to learn about steel. So, you know, it talks about this, the different steels, how they compare, their microstructures, how to heat treat them, and then how to optimize edge geometry for different tasks. The story of knife steel is completely different. It's about the history of knife steel. So uh, both the metallurgists and the knife makers and the knife companies. So, you know, there are metallurgists that design the steels. There's the knife makers that first introduced them. You know, why did they choose those steels? How did they heat treat them? Uh, how did heat treating evolve? How did steel selection evolve? It's all in there. And uh, this is not just a boring recitation of dates or right. facts like it. I tried to get as many first-hand accounts as possible. Yeah. So, you know, like when Bo Randall chooses 01 knife steel, you know, he's like one of the early custom knife makers. Why did he pick that? Uh, you can read in his words, you know, how he picked that. So uh, I try to make it a little less technical than knife engineering, even though knife engineering is also written for a general audience. You know, if you don't need the technical background, it's not in the story of knife steel. Right. Uh, but the stories are amazing. You know, like how did uh, Bill Moran develop uh, redeveloped Damascus steel and you know why did he want to do that uh, Bob Loveless at the same time was a stock removal maker and he introduced 154 cm which was the new hot super steel oh yeah so it's like the the new space age you know science steel versus the old school Damascus legendary method and uh, so they would battle like you know what is the best approach what's the best steel 
and uh, so we got it all in the story of Knife Steel. So. That's awesome. So where is that available? Where can people? So you can just get that on Amazon. Uh, also, my website has a link to a PDF version. So if you're in uh, a country outside of the United States or Europe, it'll be tough to buy a physical copy. Right. So go get a PDF, or if you just like reading on your iPad, you know. So nice. Absolutely. So they can find that on KnifeSteelNerds.com. Yep, KnifeSteelNerds.com. That is awesome. Well, Laren, thank you so much. You're an absolute wealth of knowledge, and thank you for stopping into the studio. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, you know, we came for a family vacation, so number one on the list, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Of then course. number two, Dollywood. You know? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you you got you to gotta visit Dollywood, absolutely. <laughs> that is fantastic. So uh, anything you got in the works, anything that we can tease at, maybe not mention any details, but uh, mm. have we got some stuff that we can look forward to on the horizon? Uh -huh. Well, I am working with Buck Knives on on a special model it's a modification of earlier pocket knives that they make so a little bit of modernization with their old school style uh, and so i'll be coming out with that along with them uh, in a couple months i hope uh, and uh, we will be working on more steels in the future but one of the biggest complaints about magna cut was just what a sudden release it was and they're really still catching up with magna cut so whatever new steels we come out with we want it to be a little bit slower so they have time to, to catch up. Actually but, gear up. Yeah, yeah th there are more things in the works, but, you know, I can't reveal them all. So Absolutely. Laren, thank you again, brother. I yeah, appreciate thank it. thank you. And, uh, folks, if you've got any questions for Laren, um, put them in the comments down below. We can forward them on to him. Um, I'm sure he's going to be watching the comments on this video as well. So if you've got any questions for him, let him know. And remember, as always, here at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, if it cuts like Magna Cut, then we carry.